come back. So that's a nice thing to see. So let's focus on the good news, the bright stuff. Returning players health-wise. Yeah, and some big names coming back. Tobin Heath has been out nine months. Look at that, last played in September. We know what she can do on the field. Samantha Mewis, due to a knee injury, has been out seven months. And boy, was she playing well when she left the team. Julie Ertz, another player out the last four games, last three months, a knee injury, just coming back. She'll start today. And Amy Rodriguez out the last two years, 2016 with the birth of her son, 2017 with an ACL injury. And then the one that everyone has the question mark over, Rose Lavelle, such a talented young player. She's only played one game with the national team in the last year, and she should get some minutes tonight as well for the United States. But there are some injuries here, and Jill Ellis has to be concerned with these, and we start at the very top of the player that was in form in Mallory Pugh. Yeah, and she gets some back, and then now you got some that have gone away. Pugh just injuring her knee out two to three months, they're saying. Uh, with her NWSL team in Washington, Kelly O'Hara. Look at all those backs that are out. Casey Short, Emily Sonnet with a back. Lynn Williams just back in with her NWSL team with a hamstring. Abby Dalkemper, who was in the last game against China, hurt her knee. And so this is a constant source of frustration and something they're looking at with the national team is how to keep these players healthy. With the one year out mark, that is something that they're gonna be focused on going forward. An important friendly tonight. Stay with us when we return to Cleveland. Lineups, the kickoff is coming up next. Jennifer, you are a true friend of the crown. Dilly dilly. Yeah. Excalibur. I spent the last four years pulling this out of the storm. I thought that was a legend. Sir Doug. Bud Light Lime. And Bud Light Orange. These are very rare. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. dilly. Oh, uh, here, let me just uh, move this. Misery. Dilly dilly. Yeah. Bud Light Lime and Bud Light Orange. Brewed with real citrus peels. Welcome back to Cleveland and of course the United States women's national team for the second time in six days getting set to take on China. This is First Energy Stadium, the surface in wonderful condition here. The rainbow numbers here tonight due to Pride Month. So the U.S. women's national team. Continental Tire Analyst Corner, let's go back to Thursday. Julie, take it away. No surprise here, Megan Rapino on the set piece just popping this one in perfectly. And again, no surprise on the other end of it is Alex Morgan for her 13th goal in 14 games. And those two have been something the second half of 2017 and going into 18. And to give you an indication of just how good they've been, look at those numbers. 13 in the last 14 games. And as I said, and then Megan Rapino nine assists in the last 11. Boy, and they were really clicking when they had uh, Mallory Pugh out there. It was a three-pronged attack. The United States lineup here tonight in the 4-1-2-2. You see Abby Dalkemper out with that little bit of a knee bang. Sauerbrunn in the middle. Puerta starting on that right side, but pay particular attention. Kristen Press getting that start. Remember in the April games, she was not brought in because she had gone over to play in Europe instead of the NWSL, and she is back in that lineup and will be eager to do well tonight getting her 100th appearance as well. 44 goals for Press Jill Ellis, 76-6 and 15 overall as the U.S. Women's National Team head coach and of course, winning the World Cup in 2015. Let's go to China's lineup here tonight. 4-5-1 for China, very similar and up top, Li Ying, seven goals in five games during their Asia World Cup qualifiers. And if it weren't for a great Alyssa Nair save, she would have had one on Thursday night as well. And she's quite a player that will lead the line for them. 
Christina Uncle is your referee. The U.S. in blue, China in red. And it's game off for 90 here in Cleveland. An opportunity for U.S. players here to once again impress the manager less than a year away from the World Cup in France next summer. Here's Sofia Huerta getting a start here tonight to the consistent Becky Sauerbrunn. And the U.S. have broken pressure here nicely. And of course, that was the issue in the first game, Julie, was the deep defending of China and trying to break them down. And that's been the biggest challenge to the U.S. When you go back, go all the way back to the Olympics, 2016. Everyone remembers that game against Sweden where they just bunkered in and sat in and the U.S. didn't have the players to break it down. It's something that Jill Ellis recognized right away. She said in these next two years after that Olympics, we need to build creative players that can break down condensed teams. And it's a great challenge for them. They struggled again on Thursday night against it. So we'll see how they do tonight. The big talking point from a tactical perspective from Jill Ellis when we met with her yesterday. U.S. going through a light workout here at First Energy Stadium. Here is Crystal Dunn. Played three different positions on Thursday night in the 1-0 win. Beautiful switch of play here from Rapino. Put it on a dime. Beautiful ball from her. It's Press who carried it inside. Here's Huerta. And a touch from Julie Ertz. Goes out. China will get the throw in here. Had limited chances in that first game. There is their manager, Joshua Chen. Appeared 55 times for China. Also played for Partizan in the former Yugoslavia. And this is only his second game in charge. They've only been together for two weeks. He was very pleased with the opening match. Switch of play. Here's done. Backing in the Chinese defense here. Crystal Dunn tries to get the cross in. First corner of this game will go to the United States. Here is a serious history. And you'll notice from 2004, it has been all the United States. China did get a win in New Orleans in 2015. Rapino, short one. Dunn is not marked. Might have had a shooting opportunity. Elects to get the cross in. Drops at the top of the box. And Huerta caught in possession now. Is there a breakout on here for China? It's going to be a recurring theme we see tonight. China trying to break out on the counter, but otherwise staying very condensed. Rapino, nice early ball from Rapino. Here's a chance for a 1-0 lead over the top. It fell perfectly to Kristen Press. Great start for the United States, though, because already you're seeing them break the lines. Ball is lucky to skip through, and that's one press is going to want to put on frame. Really, for China, too, that's a ball that needs to be clear. There's put some pace on it, takes a weird bounce, and that is sitting on a platter for Miss Press there. Normally one she would put away. Playing over in Sweden, there's a lot of talk of her coming back to the NWSL. The rights are held by the Houston Dash. Played in four of the seven matches in the 2015 World Cup and had a goal against Australia. Morgan. Pino showing up on the right side of the field now. This seems like a more mobile, more aggressive United States, Julie. Yeah, talking to the players yesterday, that was the one thing they all talked about. Mobility, movement, way too stagnant, they said on Thursday night. And especially across lines, getting in behind, getting some midfielders in behind. Good diagonal ball here. Here's Press with a big first touch. She's going to get there first. Press will square it back. Who's there? Rapino. Look at the flexion and over the top. It'll be another corner for the United States. Five minutes in, throwing herself in front of it was Wu Haiyan. And again, it's Tierna Davidson who's able to play that beautiful ball in, an aggressive first touch that pays off. China unable to get to it. That first touch and press doing well to just find a seam. No one's making that near post run. Where's the seam? You see so many players trying to whip that across the no one. She pulls it back. Here's 
Rapino off the corner. She's been in great form. It goes to the back post. And it'll go out for a goal kick for China. We mentioned only their second match together. And Joshua Chen was the under 20 Chinese men's coach. And of course, you've got a Chinese women's league with eight teams. That's where most of these players play their game in China. How about that if you're Joshua Chen? Your very first game with only two weeks under your belt is, is the United States, your two, first two games. He was very happy after the first game in Sandy, Utah, saying he felt his players followed the plan and made it difficult for the U.S. Here is Wang Shanshan now. Holding play up to try and get an overlapping run. She's gotten one. This is Wang Sheng and Cross. A little out for the goal kick for the United States. Did they have enough team speed up front to actually play a low block and catch the U.S. on a counter, Julie? No, and, that, and that's the challenge with the Chinese team is athletically they're not going to be able to stay with their team speed. And so they're going to have to technically break the U.S. down or catch them on a counter. But they've got a finisher and a player and Li Ying up front, number 10, and some wingers who you just saw Number seven and number 11 who provide some of that speed, but China doesn't want to see this game open up and making it a, a foot race. That got, does not play into their hands. Morgan got caught from behind there and a tackle coming in there from China's run Guishi. Alex Morgan has just been in spectacular form. Finally has gotten over all those injuries. And your set piece specialist, Megan Rapino, does have Puerta to her right, who is wide open. Rapino, it's time the delivery not there. And the U.S. immediately pressing here. Great work from Julie Ertz to win the ball back for the U.S. Sauerbrunn now. This is the 19-year-old Tierna Davidson, who, as Julie mentioned, loves hitting that uh, big, beautiful ball out of the back diagonally, but she gets caught in possession here. He comes back shoulder to shoulder there with Li Ying. And cleans up her mistake. But an nervy moment there for the 19-year-old out of Stanford. Pino in the interior of midfield here. That's a nice give and go with Mewis. We'll make that Morgan Bryan. Great to see her back. And Shan Shan knocked it inside now, and there is potential for something here for China. Wang Shan Shan again. Got players getting into the box. It's a curling ball. It's not a bad idea. It almost picked out Lee Ying. Be smart, be smart, lady. That's, that's, that's. So our answer to counterattacking, well, that was a pretty good looking counterattack from China. And there's Wang on that left side who has some pace to get in. She held a run, stayed on side. <laughs> Becky Sauerbrunn. And here's Tierna Davidson. Rapino, who's really picking up the ball in a lot of good areas here. Tries to thread the needle there to Sam Ewis. It's one back now by Kristen Press. Towards Morgan. And Morgan got knocked off it. Goes back to the goalkeeper, Peng Shumung. One thing the U.S. has been working on a ton. And when they do it well, it's so effective, is as soon as they lose the ball, is putting pressure, especially in that attacking third. Winning it back, pushing it back down the throats of their opponents. And they've had great success in 2018 doing that. And I know that was another key and theme they were talking about for today. It's Julie Ertz, it's pretty interesting now. We're looking at her as a number six holding midfielder now. She was best 11 at the last World Cup as a center back. A natural move for her. Here she is now in the pivot. Hurts towards Rapino. Does well to knock it back to Dunn here. 
confident possession from the United States here 10 minutes in. And out for the goal kick. China has already qualified for France 2019 and they're already set and here's who is already in that World Cup Brazil Chile Italy Spain Thailand and uh, all the Asian countries obviously Korea Republic Japan China. Yeah, first 14 two, left. Yeah first two European teams to go in with Italy and Spain topping their groups. Five went in for Asia China qualified third out of Asia. Here's done now. Oh, she had a wide open Alex Morgan. Press is going to get there. Good support from behind. It's Huerta who whips a ball and it drops to Ertz. She'll get a shot off and it's wide. I think that's Sam Mewis. Is there an advantage to qualifying early, Julie, when it comes to preparation? Or is it better like the U.S. who has to qualify in October and keep things ratcheted up here uh, until they get through that process. I'd actually like to see all qualifiers happen earlier in April. I mean, I, and you know you're in, you, you can, besides just competitively, think about marketing and exposure for the game and the women's game and being able to promote who's gonna be in it, who's going. And so, I mean, we didn't even find out until, what, last month where, where the, you know, the CONCACAF qualifiers are, come on. It's ridiculous. It's not a bad ball. Wang Shan Shan now. She's got running into the box and she'll try to curl it back. That could be out for a goal kick. It is deemed by your referee today, Christina Uncle. There is Becky Sauerbrunn. What a model professional she has been. What a World Cup she had in 2015, Julie. Boy, and, and she gets the nickname given to her by Kate Markgraf in, in that World Cup as Butter. B Becky Butter Sauerbrunn, and it's a perfect one because she's just so, so calm and composed on that ball. And then she's found a, a young, younger protege in Tierna Davidson next to her in that center back position. Yeah, that uh, experienced veteran with the young rising center back always a wonderful combination we've seen it many times before tower brown has started under jill ellis more than any other player on the u.s i asked jill ellis why she didn't have the captain's armband on actually in the last game i noticed alex morgan had it on and uh, she said that she's wanting to expand the leadership pool and include more players and uh, is going to give it to the player on the field with the most caps at the moment it's so it, when Carly Lloyd came in, for example, in the last game, Alex Morgan took it off and gave it to Carly Lloyd because she obviously is the most cap player. There's good look at Alex Morgan, and she has been in wonderful form. 28 years of age, wearing the captain's armband tonight with the Orlando Pride. She appears tonight for her 142nd time at 28 years of age. She's won it back. She drives it in, crosses cut out. Good defending there from Wu Haiyan. It's a few goals right there. 86. 86. She's climbing up that chart. Yeah. Chasing Carly, chasing Tiffany Milbert at 100. Press. Drawn true to gets the cross and Rapino trying to get there. China with some nice little tight play to break some pressure here. They're going to earn a free kick after the foul from Sofia Huerta from Boise, Idaho. Speaking Huerta actually played for the under 20 Mexico team before shifting allegiances to the U.S. And you were high on Huerta's performance on Thursday. Yeah, I thought she brought a spark for sure and got forward. And, and this is the beauty of a Crystal Dunn on that left side on the ball right now and Huerta on the right. Jill Ellis wants him to play aggressive, play high. They play in a big shape. Puts a lot of responsibility on those two center backs when you give it away like that. Yep, there's always Sam Mewis. And she gives it away. <laughs> on cue.
Major League Soccer on ESPN presented by Audi. It is back on Saturday, June 30th, 7th Eastern. Atlanta United taking on Orlando City from the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. What an environment this is. Coverage beginning at 7 Eastern on ESPN and also streams live on the ESPN app. Uh, it is a happening in Atlanta, that is for sure. China now walks up to this. This is Zhao Wei, played in the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, and at that time she was the youngest player on China. And then Dunn will see this out. ESPN's presentation of U.S. soccer is brought to you by Advil. You'll ask what pain with Advil and Coppertone. Coppertone Sport is proven to protect. Beautifully flighted ball and uncharacteristic control there from Megan Rapino and boy has she just uh, rebirthed Julie. Yeah, Megan Rapinoe's that creative link we talked about that you need to break down those tighter compact defenses and but you need more than just a Megan Rapino to do that. But she has been consistently good on the ball. We talked about her nine assists in her last 11 games, scoring as well. And I think too much of the responsibility falls on her for that. We've got to get a couple players in midfield able to break it down as well. So Morgan coming back deep into midfield to pick that ball up. 17th minute, still nil nil. Yeah, that's a heavy hit there from Sofia Huerta, who is uh, playing the physical game here a bit today. <laughs> not, not much to discuss there, right? I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Certainly uh, has a lot to give going forward. And Jill Ellis saying, you know, she still wants to see her improve the one-on-one -on -one defending side of her game, but uh, certainly has come out very aggressive here today. Got a good matchup there against Wang Shanshan. Hurts. And Alex Morgan thought Kristen Press was making that run and let it run. Goes out for a throw. going to be a free kick for the U.S. Sam Mewis. Second half sub on Thursday night. 36th appearance here tonight. Her... Good to see her back in the lap. She has really gotten a lot of games over the last 12, 13 months. Great to see her back. The, the challenge for Jill is now she's got to continue to manage a lot of those minutes with those players coming back. Davidson stepped up nicely. Real pressure here. The U.S. have a lot of players around the China box here. Morgan example, Bryant. She's got three midfielders. Morgan Bryant on the ball right now that are all coming back from injuries. None of them probably going to be able to go 90 today. Huerta, the idea was there to try and drop it in there to Morgan, but overhit it out for the goal kick for China here in the 19th minute. You look, though, at this first 18 minutes and them able to get in behind some good looks, a great chance by Kristen Press in front of goal. I mean, the energy and the movement much better than Thursday. Already in these first 18, 19 minutes. Hurts chests it down. What a wonderful play from her. Press got caught in possession. Huerta, Mewis under pressure. Clips a beautiful ball out wide. Hertz tried to get the cross in, and it's blocked by Kong Han. Rapino getting beyond her. 
is Dunn. Nice step over for Dunn. Can she get a cross in? That is not a bad ball, just over everybody. Predominantly right-footed, playing on the left side. And again cleared as more balls being rifled into the box here by the U.S. in the 21st minute. played uh, in the J-League in Japan for Gamba Osaka. When, when you look at all the, the different outside backs that Jill Ellis has gone through, right, it's probably the one position that has just been this revolving door <laughs> of different people going through. And even into 2018 when she wanted to be settled and you looked at that injury list we showed early in the game, Part of that issue is a lack of consistency with players being healthy, but also Jill just not being settled on it yet. But this is a player on the ball right here, Crystal Dunn, although I would argue it's probably not her most favored position. Um, here's a player that can play literally on, on any line. And, and that's one you need on the field. And here's another one you need on the field. I mean, this transition with Julie Ertz going into that center midfield position. Glenn, you mentioned it early. She was an all-star center back from the World Cup team and a great center back. But when they put her in that defensive holding midfielder position, you know the energy she's going to bring defensively. And there's the other thing she brings is some great goal scoring presence. Six goals in Morgan. her last 10 games. Morgan shot will go wide and and yeah she we have seen her grow in that position too from when she first was given the opportunity from Jill Ellis and slowly you could see her getting more comfortable adding to the attack on a day like today against the compact defense we've seen her kind of creeping into the attack a little bit and, and playmaking and fighting and biting and she just brings this bite that is needed and necessary and an energy to the field that you love to see and she is a wrecking ball. She'll, I mean, she'll get in tackles. And, and literally, she was at a point where, you know, she wasn't getting much time. She wasn't playing at center back. She was spending a lot of time on the bench. She was frustrated, I know. And here, what a great story. Here she goes from, you know, World Cup starter at center back, all-star, to sitting on the bench, and they're not sure of her role, to, you know, recreating herself in midfield. She also makes her so valuable, her versatility. We had a great conversation with her yesterday, very animated, uh, very positive about what's going on. And the offside flag is up. She was also talking uh, very much about how the U.S. had to play better against the Chinese compact and, and deep defending team, and that included her getting more involved right. in the game from an attacking perspective. The tendency sometimes for, for center backs and deeper lying players to kind of not join in against teams that sit deep. Ewis, a little bit of trouble with that control, but has won it back. She'll play it wide now. Press has come inside with her touch. Rapino with a scissor-like run across the face of her. This is good ball movement here. And in the end, the final ball not there, but the U.S. painting some pretty pictures across this canvas with those passes. Mewis does well, too, because that first touch got away from her, gets the ball back again, finds a little space out wide. And it's exactly where you want. You want Alex Morgan isolated on that outside, maybe take on there, get a touch into the box. Wang Shun lost possession. Here's Morgan Bryan, a beautiful clipped-in ball that gets cut out. Think about how vital she was in the 2015 World Cup. She has just been besieged by injuries, but her insertion in the lineup pushed Carly Lloyd higher up the field and the rest is history in 2015. U.S. knocking off Japan in the final.
Lee Ying plays it forward. And Shung tried to get turned, and Huerta will go back to Ashlyn Harris, who we've hardly mentioned here, getting the start tonight. For, for Alyssa Nayer. Ended a little bit weird, didn't she? See her grab it. Came back amazingly from that ACL injury. Lupino tonight, 137th appearance for the U.S. with 36 goals. With the Seattle Reign, played with Lyon in France. Again, some good tight play here from China. Can they get out of here, though? That's doing a good job of defending here. And they've won it back. Big tackle from Mewis. Could it lead to something here? Ertz, Rapino in a good pocket of space here. Dunn creeping up on the left. Tries to thread the needle and make Dunn run for that one. Goes out for the goal kick. <laughs> Dunn's fast, but she's not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> I think that first option, sliding it through there, not in behind, was the one on. But Dunn, very active on that left side. That's a good little partnership there with Rapino and, and Dunn. I mean, and, and when we talk about, you know, the players that Jill Ellis has been trying to find to break down those more compact defenses, you know, you look at the ones that we, we talked about in the open that are just coming back from in, injuries, the Tobin Heaths, the Rose Lavelle. She hasn't had those players. Huerta, and he goes over the head of Alex Morgan. Big announcement, the NWSL is coming to ESPN News, and here are some of the upcoming games. The Chicago Red Stars, Portland Thorns on Saturday, Washington Spirit, Orlando Pride, and then the Pride and Courage on Lifetime. So a ton of great games and great announcers on those games. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markgraf, Damon Cuff will be on the call of Chicago and Portland. That's awesome. It's great to watch. The national team players competing with their club teams in the NWSL. Heading into a World Cup year. Direct ball over the top. And seen out there by Tierna Davidson. Talk about her a little bit. The 19-year-old here is, is making one heck of a push, and she's been capped to limited. Uh, only seven caps. Tonight her eighth. She's 19 years of age. And she really has blossomed here in recent times. And, and you always look in the center back, of course, you want someone good defensively. You want someone with pace, but you also want someone that's going to set the play. And she's so good on the ball and so composed on the ball. Plays a lot at that defensive center mid role for Stanford University where she plays in college. Just won the college cup with them there. Uh, but has great versatility as well. Can play outside a little bit, yeah, yeah, and and really has come into this and hasn't blinked. There's done now to Rapino. Ball goes into the box. Yesterday, uh, we know she was <laughs> yeah. studying for organic chemistry, which uh, I know is one of your great subjects. She, at Stanford. Uh, my favorite subject. Uh, she had an organic chem final on. Into the box, Morgan. We'll get back to that in a second. And pouncing on it here is Peng Shumong. Who plays for Jiangsu. She's only 20, 20 years of age in goal for China. Yeah, China had uh, organic chem yesterday and networks today, apparently. I said, what? what's that class? I never had that one. Digital, business, social. I would have taken networks over organic chemistry, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's all about relationships, all about networking. Huerta can't get there. And there is a good look at Tierna Davidson. She's got a wonderful left foot as well. And she's from Menlo Park, California. She's got her first cap against Denmark in the She Believes Cup. While we're on the subject of Stanford, we should mention Kristen Press getting her 100th cap, of course, today, which is a great milestone for her and she is the fourth cardinal to get her 100th cap the only other university with more 
North Carolina? Yes. Quite a bit more. 12, in fact. But we're catching up. And some Dorrance is going to be glad I got that right. <laughs> it's going to be worried if you didn't. Rapino. Ewis. Switch of play here. Here is Kristen Press. Drives the ball in. Laid down all. They try to pick out Ertz. Is going to stuff it in. The offside flag is up. It won't count. But there was some wonderful combination play inside the penalty area from the U.S. Speaking of Ertz getting into the attack. I'd argue a little bit too unselfish, right? I think Rapino probably could have put this one away. And if it wasn't for that first one, she put it up on a platter for Ertz. And here it is again. Could Pino have just taken this one herself? I think she could have. Is she off? So I would agree with that. Yes. You want, you want to believe she should uh, take that responsibility there, right? But. <laughs> I think she said, why didn't you take that yourself? I didn't know it was coming. What are you doing? Spreading the love. 32nd minute. Becky Sauber, what young player would not listen to her? Switches it to Davidson. And she's got done. That's a good ball over the top and just over hit. But tell you what, to have a defender that has a range of passing like that it, it is something special and can really add to the attack. In game after game, Julie, we see her hitting diagonal yeah. balls and, and really and accurate passes over distance. And how about what it does to the defense, too? Right, because they know they're then vulnerable and behind with that ball if they're playing too high a line, especially if they don't have the pace. So it adjusts them to play deeper, which opens up space in the midfield. I mean, it changes everything tactically for you when you have a player that can play that ball consistently so well. Charlie Lloyd, Ali Long warming up for Jill Ellis and the U.S. national team. Here's Huerta. Adjust! Sam, adjust! You're in the back line now! Ashlyn Harris getting her 17th cap today for the U.S. women's national team. 32 years of age. And there is Carly Lloyd, two-time... FIFA Women's World Player of the Year and Ali Long. Two very differing stories with the U.S. Women's National Team. U.S. Uh, dominating a lot of categories here, including the possession category. They've played a lot in the final third of China. Still have not uh, produced the execution to take a lead here. <laughs> Lin Yupin, and this one will go all the way back again to Ashlyn Harris, who really has not been tested yet. He's on that 2015 World Cup team, a three-time NCAA champion at the University of North Carolina. What do you think the goalkeeping position is right now for Jill Ellis, Julie? I think she has Nair as her number one, but is also recognizing she needs to still look at other goalkeepers. Tempo is lifted here. We'll talk more about that at halftime. Here is Kristen Press. She'll drive it to the far post. Rapino! It is 1-0 U.S. Crossing, finishing at its best. A goal of real quality here. In her 100th appearance, press with the delivery. Rapino scores the goal. She wasn't knocking that one back, was she? <laughs> She's like, I'm taking this one. And look at the ball in by press. Takes a peek, sees where it's on, and that is just a beauty. 
Pino, what they always tell you, hit it down and across the face of the goal, back where it came from. That keeper caught trying to cover her near post. And a beautiful finish by Megan Rapino. Fantastic goal for Rapino, her third of the year, her 37th all time for the U.S. And you love when a winger gets into the box and scores off the delivery from her opposite winger. Fantastic goal, U.S. with the one to lead here. Still getting it done, Megan Rapino. Han Pung knocked it back inside. Here's Ertz. Press, Ertz. Huerta, all the way back to Ashlyn Harris now. And definitely a, a, a more aggressive China in their attacking third. You're seeing they've got three, sometimes four players on the ball. Quick restart towards Rapino, and this will be collected by the goalkeeper, Peng Shumeng. Whereas on Thursday night, you'd look up and China would have one person on that back line with four U.S. players. Now look at that front line. You can get a glimpse on the left side of your screen. You got the one running high, but you also got two pushed high in number seven, the Wongs. Seven and 11. Wong Shuang and Wong Shan Shan. Twenty-eight-year-old Han Peng off the throw-in. Back in 2014, had a goal against the United States in a 1-1 draw. <laughs> Lin Yupin plays for Wuhan FC. Chinese Women's Professional Soccer League, which is comprised of eight teams. And we did find out that the uh, president of China is very much, in, and I know you were all over this topic, Julie, very much in pushing the yeah. women's game in China. I'm fascinated by that story. Well, just soccer in general, building it into the curriculum of elementary schools and getting younger kids to play at school. And, Building it into the curriculum, the academies. He wants to win a World Cup. Decision has to be made here. It's Ashlyn Harris off her line. She's had a few injuries in her career as well. ACL, shattered thumb. ESPN Plus is your destination for MLS Live and MLS games, including uh, Columbus and Atlanta tomorrow night. Go to the ESPN app to sign up for a free trial. Features six MLS games Wednesday night. With that subscription, you also get MLS Rewind with Taylor Twelman and Alejandro Moreno. Highlights from every game, interviews, questions, all for you, the fan. That shows posts every Monday night on ESPN Plus. So another great information source there. Sauerbrunn, Davidson. Here is Dunn, nice touch inside, right into space. Scissor-like crossing run there from Rapino. It's helped on now to press, press one time ball into the box was a good idea. And the high pressure coming from the United States now. And it forces this. Fortieth minute. Twenty-five year old Sofia Huerta. Morgan. You can see that Samantha Mewis, Morgan Bryan just kind of working their way through this yeah. game, getting very important minutes here. Yeah, and, and, and really gathering that confidence back in. Morgan Bryan 
been out as well with an injury. Rapino trying to make some problems here. Was at Lyon, of course, and was on a multi-year contract and just decided she wants to come back. Wasn't getting the minutes that she wanted. A lot of competition with that team. It's so good there. So right now, Chicago has the rights to Morgan Bryan. Looks like she's going to end up there, of course. Hong Kong. One time ball from Wang Shuang was not the best. Sarbra now out of St. Louis, Missouri. Pino. Oh, it's a beautiful little touch to Mewis. Here is Sam Mewis in full flight now. Driving down the right. Press with the cross is cut out. Press gets it back. And this one will go over everybody and out for the goal kick for China here in the 42nd minute. And the beauty of that one little touch by Rapino that just takes out two, three players getting Mewis in. Frees that line for her with a lot of confidence right now. We love to see it. A player who's battled through a lot with injuries also. I like how Rapino and Press have mixed their game up tonight. They've, they've come inside quite a bit, but have also provided the width at times and been very mobile. There's China now. They've got five, six in attack here. Sitting back as deep as they were, maybe in Sandy, taking a little bit more risk here today. Here's Li Ying. Li Ying will get a shot off. She had one of the testers in Sandy, and that'll be easily handled by Ashlyn Harris. Li Ying plays for Shandong Ladies and is one of the veterans on this team. Led all of Asian qualifiers, too, and there's a lot of quality there with her seven goals. Less than a year away from the Women's World Cup in France, of course. The Men's World Cup opening up this Thursday with Russia taking on Saudi Arabia in the opener. Dunn hustling back. It's crazy we're just two days away from that. And tomorrow, the big decision on the unified bid of the United States, Canada, and Mexico against the bid of Morocco for who is going to host the 2026 World Cup, and we all know what is at stake mm. with, with that. And it will be found out uh, very early tomorrow morning. Sauerbrunn there elects to just let it run back to Ashlyn Harris. What a ball from Mewis. Hit with real pace, got it quickly to Rapino. Trying to give it go to Dunn it was Morgan Bryan. Coming up at halftime, the Road to France calendar. We're going to take a look at uh, what is up for the U.S. Women's National Team. A look at Julie's U.S. Women's National Team player pool. So I haven't seen that yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. And then Megan Rapinoe's goal in the, her 37th. We'll take a look at that in first half highlights. Hurts. What a tackle. And she gets fouled. Wang Shan Shan. And Hurts has had some injury problems herself. Plays the game hard, Julie. She's, she's saying, don't send him over. I'm fine. I just need a moment. Catchers are there. A little bit. Julie's uh, husband, Zach Ertz, Super Bowl winner. The Philadelphia Eagles. Everybody says JJ, and I'm remembering Julie Johnston. There's now Ertz. Rapino. Chance. And it's going to be a free kick. 
And there again is Ertz in the mix inside the penalty area trying to stab in goal number two. <laughs> Offside flag was up. Always in the mix. Not sure. Ah, it was there. Off the press header. Yep, that second ball. I thought it was a deflection at first, but it was a press header. Well, she definitely brings an intimidating presence to the U.S. Women's National Team midfield. First half comes to an end. Wrap it up, Julie. I think a good half for them. They're going to be pleased. They're going to be, hopefully they can get more on the, on, on the board because of that, all the production they got out of that. They probably think they probably should have had more, but a good first 45 for the United States. You're going to see some fresh legs coming in that second half for sure. She's going to look at some players here. Kristen Press to that woman, Megan Rapino. That is the lone goal. Take a look at this. Feast your eyes on this header from Rapino. U.S. Women's National Team with a 1 0 lead over China. Papa John's presents two pizzas, three sevens, two few large one topping pizzas for just seven seventy seven each. Those sevens got me dreaming. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the U.S. Women's National Team. Beautiful look at Lake Erie as we are at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Let's take a look at the timeline road to France for the United States, and of course. They'll start it off uh, coming up in a short amount of time here in the summer of 2018. Tournament of Nations. They'll get tremendous competition in that. Then it's on the CONCACAF World Cup qualifying that in October. Then the women's draw will be in December. And then, of course, this She Believes Cup in spring as the tune-up for this, the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup in France. And welcome back, everybody. Glenn Davis. Alongside me is Julie Foudy. And again, uh, all of these matches leading up to the World Cup, leading up to qualifying, are all opportunities. So let's take a look at the player pool from your perspective. Yeah, and especially as you get into this critical last year. I mean, the, the vision has been wide open in terms of looking at players, and now they try and narrow down that focus. And so I, I think if you're looking at, and this is going to be a debate going forward, you got to get to a final 23. But let's start with the goalkeepers, and I'm going to give you a, a pool of 35. So we're not chopping it too much, but we're chopping it. A current roster you have on the left, obviously the two that are probably missing that have been in quite a bit, Jane Campbell and A.D. Franch, uh, are the other two that will come in. Moving back to the, to the backs, to the, the defenders, You've got on the current roster on your left-hand side, and look at all those players on your right-hand side that are going to be in the pool. O'Hara, of course, Sonnet, Short, Smith. I still put Klingenberg and Krieger in there, although they haven't been in because I think those are two veterans who are great for team chemistry as well. You're always going to have in that mix. And then you move on to midfielders. you got a lot of midfielders on this current roster. The two, though, and young players, right, who you want to get World Cup experience right now. Mallory Pugh out with the injury. Andy Sullivan didn't get called in, but clear still in the mix coming back from that ACL just needs a little bit more time and then on the front line you've got your forwards in on the left Tobin Heath coming back from injury and Lynn Williams on the right hand side coming back from injury as well that gets you to your 35 and again Jill Ellis and this is a great problem to have right Glenn she's got to get down to 23 she's got some big decisions to make she's got to cut 12 off of that obviously you're going to lose a few of those goalkeepers but you've got some very good players in that mix that she's going to have to to, ch to chop down what a great problem the United States has though it's almost an embarrassment of riches with how many players you have but that's going to be a focus you have going forward of course what do they call that a champagne problem <laughs> a champagne problem I think that's a champagne problem. ESPNW, log on to it. ESPNW.com for the most extensive in-depth coverage and stories surrounding the women's sports, including uh, the World Cup in sight. The U.S. women's national team has work to do. Simona Halep finally wins her first major title at the French Open. Shamika Holtzclaw inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. ESPNW.com. Stay with us when we come back. We'll take a look at first half highlights. Julie will break it down and we'll take another look at that glorious goal from Megan Rapino.
form from last Thursday. It was a 1-0 win last Thursday. Let's go back and take a look at first half highlights. Christian Press just getting a ton of space on that right side. And this is one where you think Rapino's going to rip it. She gives it to, to uh, Ertz, who wasn't quite ready for it, and gets caught in the offside position. So that one actually didn't go through. They had a good laugh about it afterwards. Uh, but again, you're seeing a lot of success getting out wide. Kristen Press, more time and space on that right side, has a chance to look up and find Pino. This one, she's not going to give up. She's not going to pull that one back. And what a nice header to just across the face of that goal, back where it came from. But really, look at that ball right on target by Kristen Press on the right side. 37th national team goal for Rapino, and of course the cross from Press in her 100th appearance for the U.S. Here's the stats. And look at the possession, 62%. And that's something they're going to be looking at in the second half. Yes, we want possession, but we got to get some productivity out, out of this and get some separation from China in that second half. That's what Jill Ellis is going to be talking about at halftime. Let's take a break. Second half right around the corner from Cleveland, Ohio. The U.S. with a 1-0 lead over China. Oh, that is not going to end well. Shouldn't there be a guard there? Hey, that's my wizard. Wow! It's Bud Light Lime and Orange season! Saddle my horse, you guys can walk. Bud Light Lime and Bud Light Orange. Brewed with real citrus peels. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the U.S. Women's National Team. This is First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. There's your game's goal scorer, Megan Rapino. Beautiful goal coming in the 35th minute or 37th. And here's the one change. Ali Long coming on for the U.S. And out goes Morgan Bryan. How about a couple of thoughts on Morgan Bryan, Julie? I think she's working her way back in, getting some minutes under her. I think it's good she got 45. Didn't see a ton of great flashes from her yet, but... I think it's a process. This is going to be an interesting few months for her, Morgan Bryan, going forward. Because she's got to start showing she can produce those minutes and make an impact in the WNB NWSL. And of course, uh, China will make changes here in the second half as well. And of course, we mentioned Morgan Bryan so vital in that 2015 Women's World Cup win. Rain coming down now here in Cleveland. That was expected in the forecast. Again, your referee, Christina Uncle, U.S. in blue, China in red. And away we go here in the second half in Cleveland, Ohio. Very vibrant U.S. over the first 45 minutes, getting minutes. The players coming back from injury like Sam Mewis and Morgan Bryan, and the U.S. looking to get more out of this game here. Against a very organized and very committed China. And Davis alongside Julie Foudy. Here to Davidson. And goes out for the throw in. Rapino flicks it forward. Here's Morgan Bryan. And Rapino's got a bit of space here. Can she get it switched? Oh, can she? Yes, she can, but it's just hit a little bit too straight. Goes back to the goalkeeper, Peng Shumeng. There's a nice analytic for you. June is a very, very good month for the U.S. women's national 23 team. 23 years. Maybe a good omen. Yeah, especially since the World Cup is in June next year. Less than a year away for the Women's World Cup. Last one was in Canada. The country did a wonderful job of hosting it. And the U.S. providing the real drama through Carly Lloyd. And her hat trick in the final against Japan at BC Place in Vancouver. 
tripped into the box. Davis Davidson goes into the challenge, and there's a flag up, offside flag. It'll be a free kick to us. Surprised that Jill Ellis didn't make a few more changes, Julie, to start the second half. No, I'm not actually, because I think it, it obviously, when you've got some some good play happening and you make so many changes, it disrupts the flow a bit. So probably wanting to give them about 15 more minutes to see if they can get a little bit of rhythm out of this. Knock a few on the board. Rotate. Even if she's there, you can rotate. Don't look at her players. I mean, rotate. Yeah, I would expect that the U.S. would want to continue that energy that they had in the first 45 here in the second half. And over the top goes China. Out it goes out for a throw. Here are the upcoming NWSL games. Uh, this is wonderful. It's on ESPN News and Lifetime. First on Saturday, 8 Eastern on ESPN News. Chicago Red Stars, Portland Thorns. Then on June 23rd, 7 Eastern, ESPN News, Spirit against the Orlando Pride. And June 30th on Lifetime, the Orlando Pride and North Carolina Courage. So see all these U.S. Women's National Team players plying their trade in the NWSL. In a city near you. Never want to miss, miss a Sam Kerr Tobin Heath matchup either. What a season Sam Kerr had. Ugh. What a player. I did a check to make sure she didn't have any U.S. lineage. <laughs> I know she's Australian. Big switch of play. Yeah, nobody picks up the second ball. This is all China right now. They're driving into the box. And out it goes for the goal kick. The U.S. recover there with Sofia Huerta as trying to drive it forward there was Han Pong. We have mentioned, uh, especially on Thursday, how deep China defended. How much of that will they confront the United States in CONCACAF World Cup qualifying? Oh, they're going to see a lot of it. It's interesting, though, tonight, you just saw them there. They're pressing higher. They're pushing a little higher. And they had such success with it in that first game. But yeah, that's something they're going to definitely see in qualifiers. And it clearly, if you're scouting the United States and you've looked, and there's not that many teams that play it against them. But if you look and see the ones that do, the U.S. have had typically a harder time breaking down. So what element when it comes to breaking down a deeper defending team do you want to see improve from the U.S.? There's a, there's a number of ways to attempt to do it, and it's probably a combination of a number of things. But which is one of those things that you think the U.S. has to improve in? I think you have to see some individuals on the ball that are breaking down that back line on a dribble, willing also to make that run to get in behind, but mostly on the ball, that creativity. And those types of players who could do that, what we were talking about before, the Tobin Heath, the Rose Lavelles, the Mount Pews, you know, all three right now fighting to come back from injury or injured. They haven't had that in the midfield. Uh, the most powerful resource in breaking down deep defending teams. Offside flag is up, is the individual. Wang Shan Shan trying to break through here. Good call. Offside. So quick look there at Ren Guishin. Played well on, very well on Thursday in Sandy in the 1 0 loss for China. Where to Ertz now? It's a giveaway here, and China now trying to conjure something up here. Big switch of play, but Crystal Dunn positioned perfectly now and gives it away. Unforced error. 
few too many of those maybe to start the second half for the U.S. A little careless with the ball here. Lewis. Huerta now has got a lot of space in front of her. She's got Kristen Press, threads the needle to press, and ball is too straight. And off her line comes Peng Shuang. Press was the target. Very workmanlike midfield player from Changchun SC. Again in that 18 Chinese Women's League. They do have promotion and relegation in the Chinese Women's League, so yeah, another I saw element that. of competition that's added. Which I find interesting. And I find it interesting, another thing we learned yesterday about China. And, and this was, I think, part of the reason where they were very successful in the 90s because they had a very state-run, uh, these academies they would send these players to, and they would find these players and, and take care of them. But parents started to worry in China, is what my understanding is, is that their kid, if they didn't make the national team, wouldn't get an education. They wouldn't have a chance to, to better their lives. So a lot of parents started dissuading their kids from playing sports in the 1990s and 2000s. And now all of a sudden, as we were talking about with their president, it's a change. Again, the offside flag is up. Yes, uh, with a high line. A change of culture and also that with the advent of more people in China having higher living standards, which was told to us by the Chinese press officer, that they're understanding how good sports are for you, for the whole body, mentally, physically. And so he says, now you're finding many more parents encouraging their girls to play, which is a great sign. So the numbers are rapidly increasing in China as well. Yeah, very interesting. Also, uh, just a reminder, we all remember Christiane from the Brazilian national team, and she plays in the Chinese right. professional league. But it's mostly uh, Chinese nationals, and this team is made up of players that play on all those eight teams. Getting a little push here from China now. Li Ying again the target. Ball clipped into the box. China still in possession here. Zhao Wei will get a cross in. It's one time down by Davidson. Ball falls to the top of the box. Zhao Wei now. Her shot is blocked. And a little run for China here on their heel, the U.S. on their heels a bit. And when you think about it, this is their third coach for China since the 2015 World Cup, where they had the quarterfinal run, which we've been talking about, to the United States. We've got players in the box here now. This is a bit of a push here from China. Li Ying trying to get turned. She's capable of creating her own shot. This one will skip in. It'll be easily handled. Rengu Gushin, who got that shot off out of midfield. Gushin has been busy. That time China got five and six players around the U.S. penalty area. So in watching China, this, they will for sure tonight have to be pleased because they've gotten into the attacking third of the field a lot more than they did on Thursday night against Sandy. Yeah. In Sandy. I mean, I mean, the challenge is when you start to play more offensively and aggressively, you open yourselves up to being exposed. And whether the U.S. can take advantage of that, we'll see. How much of that is purely recognition? Get back to that in a second. Here's Crystal Dunn. That is a whipped in cross. That's a beautiful cross. And miss it and out of play for the goal kick. How much of it is about recognizing when the shape of China is altered? Well, the, the space is altered as well. When they're pressing, that means they're opening up space and there's 
And the team, the U.S. team usually does very well when that happens, when the game opens up like this. Your goal scorer, Megan Rapino, comes off. Carly Lloyd, the two-time FIFA Women's World Player of the Year, comes on. Let's take a look back at Megan Rapino's goal tonight. Another look at it, Rapino on that back post. Making no mistake about this one. Lindsay Horan comes on for Julie Ertz. Another very talented midfielder. So similar to Thursday night, Carly Lloyd coming up into the number nine spot up high. Alex Morgan pushing out wide. So it's going to be Morgan, Lloyd, and Press on that front line. All over the top. That was a dangerous ball. Davidson Dunn is here. Dunn was not a member of that 2015 Women's World Cup winning team in Canada. And you know how motivated she is to get to a World Cup. Oh, and a heart wrencher, too, because it was the last cut. China now going to make a change. Lee Tim Tim will come on. Out goes Yen Zin Zin. Dunn's just going to clear her lines here. Good chatter by Sam Mewis, one of the most vocal players on the team and also one of the younger ones. You love to see that. You can hear her saying, no foul, no foul in that corner. Talking to Crystal Dunn. Well, you could hear the leather laid in there and that tackle uh, coming from Crystal Dunn on Yao Wei. It's going to be a dangerous free kick here. The U.S. has not been the best in recent times in defending set pieces. So here is a good area of their game that what they want to work on now. Yeah, how about this stat? The U.S. has conceded six set piece goals in the last 15 games. That's more than in the last 77 games. So something they're very conscious of. Very high line here all the way out to the 18. There's a lot of space as you can see between Ashlyn Harris and the 18. Depends on this delivery. Oh, it's just pulled in a little too tight, but there were runners in there for China. How dangerous are those balls? Because all you need is just a little touch for a little deflection. Davidson a bad touch there. It's one back here by China. Lee Tim Tim into the box off the turn. Boy, an opportunity there. If that was put on target, you could see what Wang Shun was trying to produce there in the 61st minute. And just a little sloppy and a little flat in these first 15 here for the United States. And China taking advantage of that. Picking up these little loose balls, second balls. Staying in this game. Oh, the errant first touch here or there, or the unforced error. It's led to some attacks. Morgan to flick it on. Here's Carly Lloyd trying to get there. And coming out of there was Wu Haiyan. It's going to be a nice matchup there, Wu Haiyan and Carly Lloyd. Trying to make a diagonal run there. And left alone. The U.S. now in possession. They've got five and six around the penalty area to the far post. Nudged off it. No call. Morgan went down. And Allie Long is fouled in her 39th appearance. 
back to the box. Here's Morgan on the back post. A little long with that touch. Let's see it from this angle. I think there's not enough in there for me. You could see her if she didn't. She sold it a little bit at the end. Alex Morgan had the game winner on Thursday night in Sandy, Utah. Beautiful header that she attacked off the Rapino cross and now is in a bit of a wider position here. Ball comes in the box and this time shot took a deflection off two players. Morgan hit that with the right after coming inside. Be another free kick for the U.S. They take the quick one. Allie Long now. Good switch of play. Done. Swerves inside. Oh, wonderful stuff here off the give and goes. Still Crystal Dunn to the far post. Press is going to get there. China getting pushed back here in a big way. Shot is blocked. Getting in front of that was Lin Yu Pin. Yes, really trying to pin China in here. Sixty fourth minute. That's a good switch of play. Jiao Wei now. China driving inside, and this will be a free kick. There's Lavelle coming on for Sam Mewis and Tobin Heath for Alex Morgan. So good moment here for Rose Lavelle. Yeah, good moment here for U.S. fans who've been waiting for these two for quite a long time. Alex Morgan hoping she could get one before coming off. Good work on both sides of the ball. That was the player that was just tracking down. Alex Morgan was checking it, tracking down that Chinese defender. Rose Lavelle, as we mentioned earlier, so much talent for such a young player, but only one game in the last year. Battling a hamstring injury. With the box it comes and the offside flag was up. So we talked about those that love to dribble and take people on off the dribble. Well, we just have seen the entry of two of those types of players in Heath and Lavelle. And now China's going to counter with a couple of subs of their own. So Yui is going to come on. She will come on. And also coming on is number 26, Wang Yen, for Gushin. Each team allowed six substitutions. Here is Lavelle. Interesting that Lavella and Tobin Heath in and around the same area of the field here. Along with Crystal Dunn, that's quite the trio. <laughs> All on that left side, right. Heath went in for Morgan. Straight position swap. Rose Lavelle in up in that high attacking midfield, center midfield on the left side. Great to see Tobin Heath back out there. 2015 World Cup winner, two-time Olympic gold medalist, 30 years of age with the Portland Thorns out of Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Also spent time playing in France with PSG. It's been quite some time. Last time we saw her was September of 2017 against New Zealand.
Davidson to Ashlyn Harris. Huerta's got her back to an attacker here, so she's in a bit of trouble here. China trying to double her up over there, and she's going to have to concede the throw in. I, I think that's a, that's a situation where Ashlyn Harris has just got to send that one long. It's been a couple like that with her feet. Especially with China starting to press a little bit more coming forward. Trying to spear the volley, the high kick there. Drew a few oohs and ahs. Christina Uncle just allowing things to move forward here. Huerta. High pressure, they win it back. Allie Long in that deeper roll, Julie, in front of the two center backs. And, the, and you, you mentioned earlier the, the path she's taken to get to the national team. We didn't get into it, but what a path. I mean, this is a player who came onto the national team after having a successful pro career and just kept fighting to get in the mix, playing in the offseason, as we've said before, but worth repeating. She plays in the boroughs of, of New York City and this great underground Hispanic league with all the men. La gringa, they call her. Ardent futsal player from Northport, New York. Played at Penn State University of North Carolina. Tonight appearing for her 39th time. So a late bloomer when it comes to the national team. Davidson gets caught in possession here. She's had a couple of moments here that have been nervy tonight, but also uh, shown us a great range of passing as well. Only 19 years of age. So she picks up a yellow card. 70th minute now. Set piece for the U.S. to defend here. Very high line. Goes into the back post. Long does a great job to throw her head at it. Lloyd. And it's going to be a free kick. Rose Lavelle getting fouled there. Jill Ellis straight off her chair, off the bench, asking for a card on that one. Uh, very protective there from the U.S. national team coaches. We all know how long it's taken Rose Lavelle to get exactly. back to this point. I can see why she'd be off off her bench, off her bench quick. Here's Davidson. He's going to hit a long diagonal into the box. Who's going to win this? Who's going to win the second ball? Taking it right off the head of her own defender is Peng Shumung. You want competition, you want the Tournament of Nations. July 26, the U.S. get Japan, they get Australia, and they get Brazil, Julie. Yeah, and it's continuing this pattern of, and it's one of the reasons they stopped going to the Algarve and had the She Believes, and they brought the Tournament of Nations in so that they can get consistently good opposition. Iran spinning out of there. And how important with World Cup qualifiers in October. Out jumped here. It's a two on one if China hurries here. It's a chance to get back in this, and they do. They tied it up. Two players go up for the U.S. Don't get ahead on it. And it leads to a two on one. Starting this all the way back, Carly giving high pressure, but the two players come.
coming at the same time. Just a miscommunication by the U.S. Dunn doesn't know whether to go or to stay. She gets caught in between. She starts to go. Good recognition by China. Lee Tim Tim to Lee Ying, who hits that finish and has tied things up here. And on a very elementary mistake at the back. Yeah, and it's it's two players. One's got a drop, of course. One's got to go ball, just a lack of communication. But it started at the top. Carly pressed really high, and I was noticing it. Press tried to go with her. So you have this big gap in the midfield as well. They got spread out because the rest of the team wasn't with her. Very revived China now, and they've gotten very aggressive here in the second half as well, and they've tied things up. And what a great challenge for this U.S. team because you could see in the second half it was flatter. There wasn't the same energy. There wasn't the buzz that you had of the first half. And how are they going to react to this, especially when you get some of these players back in for the first time after big absences? A lot of changes made as well, which has to be factored into everything, but not when it comes to two center backs going up for a singular ball. So off the free kick here now. Wang Shuang is number seven, and she's going to try it. She bends it. Ashlyn Harris with a great save, picked it out of the corner. And it goes out to the goal kick, but Ashlyn Harris, who has not had a lot to do here tonight, all of a sudden in the second half has. Great save by Ashlyn, and... and a reminder, it's hard. Look at that wall. There's no vision. You're not seeing that ball till it clears those heads. And having to react last minute like that. Good save by Ashlyn Harris. We picked herself up really quickly after making that save as well. And boy, how about the offering from Wang Shuang? Tremendous free kick. Done. Tobin Heath. Changes the point of attack. Joining in here is Huerta now. She's got press to her right. We'll play to the feet of Press. Three in the box for the U.S. Now four with Lavelle getting in there. Kristen Press now driving parallel to the top of the 18. Works a give and go. Ball is flicked and goes in. Sure, if there was a handball there, but the U.S. is going to take the goal. It's Tobin Heath on her return. That yeah. must feel good. Yeah, you can see it. A little give and go. Takes it off the shoulder. A bit of a miss hit, although Heath is probably going to claim I'm going to do that. But what a nice little give and go. Just clips under it. And Heath, what a response for the United States, and especially for that one, her first game in nine months. Wang Shuen now has gotten into the box for China. They're trying to respond here. And the U.S. will get it cleared. If you're Tobin Heath, you'll take that goal any way you can, Julie. Yeah. And, you know, and, 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 to, and to give her credit, when they're looking for those little combinations in there. Those are the type of players that, that, that they are, and Press and Heath. Again, when you talk about trying to, to break through. Val Sauerbrunn done. It's a very flat straight ball, and again, it's another unforced error. Jill Ellis is not going to be happy tonight with the amount of unforced errors that have come from the U.S. women. Lloyd with a towering header here to keep this attack going. Tobin Heath got runners to her right. They'll try one at the near post. Maybe saw Peng Shuen maybe kind of looking her off and may driving something spectacular there. ESPN's presentation of U.S. Soccer brought to you by the long-lasting power of Energizer. Still going. 
and Papa John's. Two large one topping pizzas, just $7.77 each. Merritt Mathias, Texas A&M, will come on for Sofia Huerta. First cap for Mathias. Big moment in her career. Plays for the North Carolina Courage. Full complement of substitutions have now been moved, used by Jill Ellis. Two one United States, seventy eighth minute. Jersey there on Becky Saubrum, the obvious free kick for the U.S. MLS on ESPN, presented by Audi, back on Saturday, June 30th at 7 Eastern. Atlanta United taking on Orlando City, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. The coverage will begin at 7 Eastern on ESPN, and it'll also stream live on the ESPN app. Han Peng getting the yellow card for China. I've been watching a lot of games on ESPN Plus. Absolutely. You're loving love the it. plus, huh? Oh, yeah. We got the plus as well. Our plus has a lot of cricket on it. It's <laughs> like, got a lot, of, a lot of everything on it. I'm not so sure I'm loving the plus with the cricket. U.S. pressing now here with Tobin Heath. Lavelle, here is Rose Lavelle now. This is what she loves to do, loves to take people on. We said, you know, how did that come into your game? Just said, I had a wonderful youth coach who always encouraged me. And due to my smaller stature, I figured I had to be a good, <laughs> good person off the ball and off the dribble. So it, was, it was survival, really. Also a means of surviving, she learned to cook. Big news. I said, <laughs> who taught you? Sunny, she lives with Mal Pugh and Andy Sullivan. How about that? That's a feature. I know they did something on Lifetime with them, but. And I said, well, I was thinking she'd learn how to cook like a five course meal or something. And what'd you learn how to cook? Rose? Eggs. <laughs> really? Scrambled? Sunny side up? Scrambled. And she had this. <laughs> <laughs> Big smile, like, victory! <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm not coming to your house for dinner. All three of those on the Washington spirit of the NWSL under Jim Guevara. Here's Matthias getting a touch in. Also plays for the North Carolina Courage. She got caught in possession there and is going to have to concede the free kick here. 81st minute. Has to be a nervy moment getting that first cap. Oh, yeah. But exciting as well. Yeah, and what a great opportunity to come into a game where you can make a difference like this. Final minutes, some tired legs out there. So a lot going on tonight for Jill Ellis. Uh, obviously wanting to keep her... Uh, the fluidity going in the first 45 minutes for sure. Players coming back from injury, getting minutes here tonight. Working them back into it. And also providing opportunity to some that have not gotten caps as well. So lots going on here tonight in Cleveland. You know, and the theme we've been talking about all game is that I think, you know, the U.S. really in this position a year out wanted to see itself. And Davidson again uh, got... Caught in possession there. That's that's the third time we've said that for Davidson. Just a little bit slow on the ball. So unlike her. Been caught a couple times. Ball played into the box. Off the turn. There's a hit. Going to ground. Good clean handling there from Ashlyn Harris. But again, China 
With some quick circulation of the ball, getting a good opportunity there from Selyui. And, I, and like I was saying, I think this is a situation where you think, you know, you're a year out, you're, you're starting to lock in, you're starting to look at your formations and some of your consistent lineups. Cross is blocked. Carly Lloyd trying to make it happen. And they just haven't been able to do that. Not yet. So if there's ever a scorer of big goals, she is one of them, Carly Lloyd. 254th appearance tonight, sitting on 100 goals for the U.S. Had that halfway line shot that caught Ayumi Kaori off her line against Japan in the 2015 Women's World Cup Final. That will go down in lore. Not to mention a hat trick on the day. Corner. A hat trick in 16 minutes on the day. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. Jeez. Amazing. And two people have ever produced a hat trick in a World Cup final on the men's side, Jeff Hurst. On the women's side, Hurst for England, Carly Lloyd for the United States. And Jeff did not come in 16 minutes. <laughs> It was England's uh, lone World Cup win in 1966. China trying to break the pressure here. Sauerbrunn this time will play a header that's just nodded to her right back. Matthias gave it away. And Sauerbrunn says, enough of this. We're just going to knock it over the halfway line and kind of regroup here. Pino and Heath for the United States. Li Ying for China. Two to one U.S. Be a free kick. I have to be impressed with what China has done here in the second half, Julie. Yeah, and, and like we said, especially this coach has only been with this team for two weeks. Brand new. This is only their second game together. They've, they've looked organized. They've stayed in it. They've been compact when they need to, sprung out when they need to, and get a nice finish. She rolled her ankle, Tobin Heath. There's her numbers in her last 133 international appearances. June 26, 8.30 Eastern, ESPN News is your home for an exciting USL tilt. Nashville SC hosting Indy 11 from Tennessee Park in Nashville, Tennessee. Coverage begins 8.30 Eastern on ESPN News. Also streams live on the ESPN app. So a little hold your breath moment here for Tobin Heath. Ankle was the, she had a back earlier in the absence and also had ankle surgery when she was rehabbing from her back. So they really are weighted with bated breath on the sideline. Hoping all is okay. And she also came into this game with a little bit of a hamstring issue. Saw her grabbing her leg there, talking to the trainer. U.S. for the moment with 10 players waiting to reintroduce Tobin Heath. He's still standing on the halfway line. And now she makes her way back on. Ashlyn Harris all the way out to the 18. Came up with that sparkling save off the free kick from Wang Shuang. Heath.
China throw in here in the 87th minute. I think if you're Jill Ellis and, and, and you're part of this staff, you're thinking, okay, first game. Obviously not what they wanted, needed some growth. They got that in the first half. But the challenge for the U.S. going forward is can you string 90 minutes, right? And especially when you make some changes, because there are going to be changes. And we didn't see that tonight from the U.S. You saw a second half that was flatter, didn't come out with the same spark, some, some errors. And then you saw a good team like China capitalize on it. When you come into World Cup qualifiers and World Cups, you just cannot afford to have two defenders go up for a header and make a mistake like that because they will capitalize on it. They're able to pull out of it, which is another positive, but that is... Heath will try this and may have seen Peng Shumeng off her line. In the end, it's an easy catch for the Chinese goalkeeper. 20 years of age, has played every minute of these two games. But I think that's an incredible point that you brought up because in CONCACAF, you do not want to make in a World Cup qualifying. You don't want to give anything to anybody. Here's Heath, Tobin Heath. Trying to get a second here. Try to cut inside on the outside of her right foot. Goes back to the goalkeeper. Peng Shumung. And the, and the great news is, is you get players like this back, though. You got a Tobin Heath back. You see what she brings to the lineup. Sauerbrunn in a race here. Ashlyn Harris is going to call her off it. a game of two very differing halves here today. Much of that because of the implement of sub substitutions and nice work there from Long who stepped up to win it. Matthias in her first cap. Davidson, Dunn, Lavelle. All moving confidently off the feet of U.S. players here. They earn the free kick. Ali Long has put some good minutes in here. 90th minute. And to be fair, you'd expect mistakes in this game here tonight. Yeah, now is the time to make them, too. And you've got a lot of players coming back that aren't able to to give full 90 coming back into fitness. I mean, an, another great sign, Rose Lavelle back in the mix. Morgan Bryan getting minutes in the first half. Of course, Jill Ellis telling us yesterday, she said, you know, we've got to build back up Morgan Bryan. What is, what is she? Evidence she's been out. She hasn't been getting minutes. She's now gone from Houston to Chicago to Lyon, now back to Chicago. So I think it's getting consistency, but mostly getting that mental edge. It's huge when you lose it. Here's Lavelle. Yeah, she took that touch away from pressure. Floats it out wide. Press getting the full 90 minutes here tonight. That wonderful cross to Megan Rapino in the first half for the game's opening goal in the 35th minute. On a night where she earns her 100th cap, Matthias. And China trying to hit her vacated space. Li Ying, their goal scorer, trying to get there. And good work from Davidson to provide the cover laterally. Came in behind her partner at center back, Becky Sauerbrunn. Heath has shown up on the right side of the field. To slow it up. Got Lloyd in the box. And he's going to earn the corner here after some diligent work down the right side. Another great ball in by Kristen Press to get her in behind.
a little trouble here right now for Lin Yupin. Plays for Wuhan FC. Been put under pressure a lot here tonight as a center back for China. Four minutes of stoppage time. The U.S. off a corner. Love to pick off a third goal here. It's driven in towards the near post. Then you pin with the header. And that's the ball that needed to be played. Lee Tim Tim, the second half sub, will knock it back. Lavelle. Helped on here. Wang Shuan. You have to be impressed with the technical ability of China and these quick little give and goes. Cleared by Crystal Dunn. It almost trickled through for a shooting opportunity. China's not going to go away silently here into the night of Cleveland. No. Man, if you're Zha Xiao Chang and you're the coach of China two weeks in, I think you've got to be pleased with these two games. group uh, under him have only been together for two and a half weeks. Again, China has already qualified for the 2019 World Cup in France. Matthias going to drive it over the halfway line. Wu Haiyan. Shall we? That does it. A two to one victory here tonight. The game winning goal will go to Tobin Heath. Ashlyn Harris coming up with a vital save off a free kick. The U.S. now unbeaten in their last 16 matches under Jill Ellis. Started the scoring in the 35th minute. Megan Rapino. Lee Ying would tie it in the 72nd. Three minutes later, Tobin Heath will take a break. From First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, we'll come back, we'll wrap it up from Ohio after this. Tobin Heath, you see her here? Well, she got the game winner here tonight in Cleveland. Member of the Portland Thorns, they'll be in action against the Chicago Red Stars on ESPN News. Her first game there, Jen Hildreth, Kate Margraf, and Daylin Cuff on the call of that one. It's a big win here for the U.S. tonight. Two to one winners over China. Megan Rapino getting one of the goals in this one. Coming up next, it's an ESPN FC special. For Julie Foudy, our entire crew, thank you for joining us. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Once again, our final score from Cleveland, Ohio. The United States, two to one winners over China. Until next time, U.S. winners over China.